So welcome to this tutorial on Unpivot in Excel. If you check the hyperlinks in the description field, you can jump directly to the how-to section, which is actually pretty basic, but I also include a little bit of introduction about what Unpivot actually does and how it works. So what is Unpivot? Um, that's one of the big questions. Why do I care about it? Um, you will if you're handling data. And how and when do I use it? Um, that's actually fairly important. So power if you didn't have Power Query and Pivot in uh, Excel, of course, you had to do it manually. And that was a brute force job, and we've done it, and we hate it. If you're slightly more advanced, um, evolved, you could use some VBA coding. Well, I don't know anything about VBA coding. It's Greek or hieroglyphics to me. So, not much I can do with it. Here's what you often find. You'll get a table information. So this is what you have. Now, this isn't really data. It looks like data, but it's really a report. So there's not much you can do with it. It's really hard to work with, especially if someone says, oh, I'd like you to do this instead. Can you just give me a nice line chart with all these uh, columns of countries and dates? This comes from the World Bank. It's on carbon dioxide emissions. Very difficult. That's because a report has limited options. And data, of course, has unlimited potential. You can have all kinds of things you can do with it. So really what you have to do is reverse engineer a table into data and make sure you know what you have when you get it, a report or a table. So this is a report. I don't really call it data in the true sense. It came from data, but it's not. <clears throat> As you can see, it looks very interesting, lots of juicy content, but can't really work with it. The years are separate. Here's almost that same product, except now I did it based on data, which I'll show you later. Um, so again, it's got columns of, of years and rows of countries, but now it's being handled as data. So the years are now all in a single column called years. That's very different. So this is also a report, but it originates from pivot data. Now, a lot of times that's confusing when people see it. They say, well, I don't really see the difference between those two tables. Um, and that's where we have these dreaded merged headers that people do manually. And never forget that human brains think differently than computer brains. We can look at columns of years and see that, that they're related. If there's two col if there's more than one column with years, a computer doesn't see any connection between them. And the important thing is not to confuse your computer. So the data in unpivoted format for this table would look like this. So it has one column for year. And in fact, as you can see, there's a lot more rows because the original table had 248 rows. In the unpivoted format, it has 10,404 because that's how many um, unpivoted rows of data there are. But to the computer, 10,000 rows is nothing, so we needn't fear it. In fact, it's opening all kinds of doors. So how do I unpivot a table? Um, of course, using Power Query the unpivot button, which is built right in there, so it's not very hard to use. You need Excel 2010 and above. Um, if you don't have uh, that version, earlier versions do not have this function, so you'll have to stick with manual procedures. And all you have to do is just press the unpivot button. It's that simple. It's right on the toolbar here, so fairly simple to teach you how to use that. But just bear in mind the difference between a report and a table. This is a tape report coming from pivoted data. This is what you often see. Somebody has taken this thing, they've manually inserted a merged header, and that really, really messes you up for data management. So you definitely want to keep away from those. So I flipped over into a an Excel file. The one I was using in this demonstration comes from the World Bank some statistics on carbon di dioxide emissions. And of course, it's instantly obvious. I've kind of highlighted in yellow here to make the point. The table had columns for each year. So each of these columns is unrelated to the other column. In other words, you've got country names, you've got this thing called 1960, which is absolutely unrelated to 1961. Yet this is what we often do manually because we understand that these are all years. So we let the users know Oh yeah, by the way, these are all the same thing. Well, that's not the way we want to do it in a data format. So what we need to do, of course, is to pull this into Power Query, which is fairly straightforward. Of course, you need to install the Power Query add-in, but assuming that you've done that, um, you're going to go up here. In this case, I'm just going to pull it straight from the table. It's going to generate a, um, a window. 
specifically a Power Query, Power Query window. I have to say that three times fast. Anyways, this isn't a Power Query course, but essentially now that I pulled into Power Query, I can just uh, close and load that into my system, which I'll do here, which then of course just opens up a new window in Power Query. As you can see, I've already done this before. And of course, as stated, it has 248 rows. Now I'm just going to go up to the uh, open up that Power Query table and go to the Transform, Unpivot. You have the choice of so either picking the columns you want to unpivot or picking columns and telling the system to unpivot all the others. In this case, it's probably easier to do that way because if there's more of one than the other. So I'll just say take these columns and unpivot everything else. Um, and that's basically all I need to do. Close it and load it. So it's loading, of course, another duplicate. I've already done this once, but it's now created a 10,400 in a row table. But now each country is has multiple entries. But what's important is this attribute, of course, which I could rename here. Oops. I'll rename that. Actually, I have to rename it over here in two years. And with the data in a typical uh, spreadsheet, I can now throw in a pivot table. Again, I won't go over that detail here. I've just added country, year, and value, of course, classic pivot table. So there's the table. But of course, my goal was to create a nice little dashboard, which I have over there. And I just threw another slicer on with the country code. So now I can actually see the trend of carbon dioxide emissions preparing for my meeting with Argentina, Canada, and Mexico. So we can see it. Of course, the usual slicer options. So it'll work for any country. So now you have the ability to prepare all kinds of multiple output products, reports, tables, charts, because you have the unpivoted data to work with. Um, so if you want to produce a table with 248 rows, that's a piece of cake or anything else you want. But often you get the data in that unpivot or in that pivoted format and that's actually pre-processed. So you have to reverse engineer it back to the data, but it's very simple now with the unpivot button in Excel and you're away to the races. So it's a very useful thing to have if you, uh, and you definitely will save yourself a lot of time and make a lot of people happy. So what works for you? Enjoy, take care, bye.